Good afternoon. Welcome to Meets Rob Shop. I'm Jason. Today I've got my 1970 Mach 1 Mustang in the shop. We're going to do an electric cooling fan upgrade and a 3G alternator install on this. I can tell you a little bit about the car. It's an Enco car, 351 Cleveland, FMX Auto. It was a four barrel car, still is. Uh, automatic, obviously. Air conditioning, the front disc brakes, power disc brakes, power steering, rear drum. Uh, it has been lowered a little bit. It's got some aftermarket uh, Shelby knockoff wheels on here. Uh, it's a nice car, it's a cruiser, it's slow, it's not a fast car by today's means. Heck, I think my, uh, my wife's minivan will blow the doors off of this thing, but you don't look near as good in the minivan as you do this. So, let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you what we're going to be working with today. Come along, and let's check it out. Alright, today is what we're going to be installing on the car. I do have just a standard, cheap, $100 rebuilt uh, 3G alternator for a 94-95 Mustang GT 5-liter car. I have the PA Performance external voltage regulator. Um, really, the only thing this is used for is to retain the factory wiring on the car, um, as the 3G alternators are internally regulated, but since I've got a voltage gauge in the car, I didn't want to start running new wires, so I figured it was just easy to spend the $30 and use this setup from PA Performance. I've got two Permacool 2300 CFM each fans. Uh, they're going to be going into the car, and then I've got a aftermarket uh, dual electric fan shroud that I had on the car before, but I don't think these fans that were originally installed in it have enough CFM to move enough air across the car. When they were in there, the car would overheat. Uh, sitting still, you get rolling again, and of course it would cool right now, which tells you that you're not moving enough air through the radiator. So that's why I pulled this off. I went back to the mechanical fan setup, but uh, I'm going to go back to the electric fan with a better set of fans. All right, so first things first, got to get the radiator out of the car. we got to get the fan and assembly off the car, do a little bit of wiring. We'll throw some relays in there because you don't want to wire your fans direct to the switch or anything like that because you smoke the switch and the uh, fan controller as well. So but let's go ahead and get started and pull some stuff out of the car real quick. Alright, first things I do want to do, I want to apologize for the sound quality in this video. It is uh, Atlanta, Georgia and it is hot during the dog days of summer, which is silly to me because my dogs hate this weather, so I don't know why they call it that. They won't even come outside. But I got two exhaust fans running in the shop because it's about 90 degrees right now in here. And when you're an older fat guy like me, uh, you tend to try and stay as cool as you can, so I apologize for the sound quality, but uh, right now I've got the radiator draining. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the negative side of the battery, and then we're going to disconnect the hoses, get the fan shroud, get the fan out, uh, and uh, we'll start there. Fan clutch out. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull this alternator off. 
when you get ready to disconnect your alternator, make sure and mark your field wire, your main power wire, ground wire. That way you know which one to put where on this kit, because the kit you will have to cut and splice some wires. So make sure you mark them properly. All right, we've got the old alternator out. I've got the new 3G alternator sitting next to it. You can see the mounting tabs are pretty much in the same location. They're also the same diameter. The alternators are pretty much the same diameter, so this is pretty much a direct fit. Um, the only difference is um, the original alternator is the tab that adjusts the length of the belt or shortens the length of the belt, whatever you want to do, it is threaded, whereas on the new 3G alternator, it's not. It's a smooth one. So what I did is I just took a bolt, took a nut, welded a little tab on it. That way, when I'm tightening it up, I don't have to use two hands. I can just thread it on there, and then the tab will lock up against the alternator so you can tighten the belt. Makes it easier. Makes it a lot easier. That way you don't have to use two people or three hands. Unless you got three hands, and then I say, hey, can you use them? Who am I to discriminate? All right, so when you're hooking this up, you take the plug from the kit and you plug that in there. You'll see the little white plug. There's a smaller plug next to the main plug that you hook it up to. The yellow wire will hook up to the battery positive or B positive terminal. The green wire with the red stripe hooks up to your field wire in the car. Now, your stator wire in the car, it says to cap it. Tape it up, cap it, whatever you want to do. It says it may still have power on it, but it's not used. So, and then, of course, your battery positive hooks up to this as well. And then we'll go ahead and we'll wire this up and get it back in the car. You do have to change the pulley on this. Of course, the pulley coming off a 94, 95 GT is going to be set for a serpentine pattern. Um, the old pulley, I don't believe, fits. It's also got an external fan on there. You don't want to use it. So what I did is I went on Ease Bay and I just ordered up a uh, double pulley uh, for a four. So we'll go ahead, get the impact gun. We'll knock this old one off. And we'll put the new one on there. Impact, tighten it up a little bit. You don't want to smoke it down there, but just make sure it's got good resistance. And then what I do is I'll take a sharpie and I'll mark across the nut in the shaft. That way I can look in there in the future and see if that nut's back off, see if the pulley's moved at all. All right, as you see here in my hand, you can see I've got the plug for the new 3G alternator. It's all hooked up and ready to go. Um, what I did with the original ground wire, because there is no case ground on the 3G, um, I just ran it down to the block and I've got my ground hooked up there. Um, we'll go ahead and we'll throw this alternator in there. All right, now that you got the alternator bolted up there and you got that wired in, what you need to do now is you need to pull your factory regulator off. You need to replace it with the PA performance unit. You see one's a little bit shorter, that's the PA unit, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Just go ahead, disconnect the old one, hook up the new one, screw it to the firewall. Actually, the fender well, excuse me, it's on the faster side of the fender well. All right, I've got the old fans off. I've got the new fans sitting here. I'm going to go ahead. I've got the little clips that slide into the fan. I'm going to drill some holes in the shroud because where are these mount at? Um, they don't match up with the old ones. So we'll go ahead and pop some holes in this, and then we'll get ready to screw it to the radiator shroud. We got the fans mounted in the shroud. You see, you got the negative positive in each one. Now we're going to hook them up to uh, the wiring. What I've got off the car is I've got just some push connectors that go to, I think, two 40 amp circuit breakers. Um, I believe they're 40 amp. Yeah, they're 40 amp. I run a separate circuit breaker for each fan 
That way they're not both running through the same circuit breaker. But just go ahead, I'm going to hook the positive side up to the uh, uh, circuit breaker, and then I'll hook up the negative side to these negative plugs. And then we'll talk about the relays, the sensors, and everything in the car. Let's go ahead and put this hooked up. Alright, we've got the relays all wired up in the car. I've got the fan controller wired up in the car. This one's just a simple kit. All it has is a temp sensor that screws into the water pump. When it hits 185 degrees, it goes ahead and turns on the fans. Since this is an AC car, I wired two relays in, one for each fan. Then you've got the fan controller, which has its own relay, and I put in a fourth relay for the AC unit. So when the fan, excuse me, when the AC compressor kicks on, it actuates the, the one relay, which then turns both fan relays on. So now we've got to mount the fan unit to the radiator. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can see here, I've got both fans wired, or excuse me, I've got both, both fans uh, mounted to the shroud. So go ahead and place it over your radiator. Make sure it fits. This one lines up good. Um, there's really uh, not much to it. That's all you got to do, basically. Make sure it'll mount. Put a couple screws in it, hold it to, to the radiator, and then put the radiator in. All right, our fans are mounted to the radiator. Let's go ahead and slide that into the car. All right, radiator's back in. Hoses are tightened up. I've got the relays, the fans all plugged in, hooked up. Um, easy way to check it. It depends on the system that you're using. If, uh, like, since this is a temperature switch, what the switch does is half the switch is wired to ground, and then once it hits the predetermined temperature, it closes and then gives that uh, relay for the fan controller a ground. So what I did is I just disconnected that switch. I've got the ground here. I've got the ignition to on. What I'll do is I'll just short it out the ground. And you can hear the fans turned on. Um, what you can do then is you go in the car, flip the AC C switch on. You can do this all without the engine running because it's all electrical. And once the AC turns on, the fans should kick on as well, which they do have already done that. But that's it. That's a uh, it's pretty simple this install. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, now what we need to do is go ahead and crank up the car after we put the radiator fluid back in there, get it up to temperature, and make sure that temp switch works. So that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and install the radiator fluid, and we'll get it running, and we'll see how she works. All right, radiator fluid is back in there. She's all buttoned up. Everything's tightened up. I already cranked it up, got the temperature. The fans did turn on at the correct temperature, so she's running good now. I'll go ahead and crank it up. I don't know that you'll be able to hear the fans over this car. Somebody put uh, two ch chamber flow masters on there. Not me, I'm not a fan of them. But uh, so the car's a little loud. Uh, you'll probably be able to see uh, how big rich it's running, too. She's running a bit rich, but uh, I'll crank it up for you. sitting at a light and the tent just keeps on climbing but uh, once you get rolling it cools off so uh, I took the mechanical fan off because this has got an aftermarket rack and pinion setup on there I don't have the old steering box with the power assist this is a rack and pinion setup this has a single pulley on the, the pump for the power steering 
and the pump for the water pump runs off the power steering pulley as well. And no, no matter how tight I got that belt with the mechanical fan set up on it, 3,500 RPM and above, and the belt was just singing. And I, I could not get it tight enough, and I cannot find, because it's an aftermarket unit, cannot find a dual pulley setup for the power steering pump. So that's why I'm going back to the electric fans. Kind of for the cooling, and, but really mainly for the belt squeal. I, I just am sick of dealing with the belt squeal on this car. So right now I've taken her up to five grand, and she doesn't squeal, she doesn't sing. So hopefully that's fixed. But uh, it looks to be like maybe the cooling's fixed too. So maybe double whammy. Maybe I'm lucky in this. But like I said, those are the uh, 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 be cool. I think they are. Just so you know, these are the Permacool 12-inch fans, dual fans. They both run. 2300 a piece, so you're looking at 4600 CFM air movement across that radiator. So if that won't keep it cool, I don't know what will. That's up on par with a regular mechanical fan, but it's just cool a little bit faster, hopefully cool a little bit better, and no more squealing. That's the big thing. But, uh, that's it. Um, you may see some more on this car coming up. I'm planning on putting an AOD transmission in it, getting rid of the 3-speed FMX, putting a better gear in there, a 350 gear, it's a 9-inch rear end, 31 spines. So I want to go to a 350 gear so I can cruise it on the freeway and a little bit better uh, stoplight to stoplight um, with a lower gear. And with the uh, AOD overdrive transmission, I'll be able to turn around the freeway. Uh, EFI is coming with this car. I'm sick of dealing with this carburetor, so I'm going to go to EFI. And hopefully next year, uh, me and a couple of buddies of mine are planning on doing the power tour. So maybe next year you'll see this car on a power tour. I don't know. Maybe this will turn a 15-second quarter mile, maybe 15 and a half second quarter mile. If it turns any faster than that, I would really be surprised. This car is really pretty slow. Uh, but uh, that's it. That's all I got for you. Thank you for checking in. Thank you for checking out the video. Uh, have a good day, and remember, keep your head up and stick on the ice.